Dear children, we finished with the components of aggregate demand and aggregate supply like AD is equal to C plus I and AS is equal to C plus S or Y is equal to C plus S. So the components like consumption, saving, investments, all these are included in aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now we are going to learn all these components in detail like consumption, saving and investment. So today's topic is consumption, consumption function. Consumption function is denoted by the letter C, consumption function that is it refers to the functional relationship between income and consumption. So what is a consumption function? It can be represented in the form of a function that is C is equal to F of Y. When you learned about the component of aggregate demand, you learned this equation C is the F of Y. What does it mean? Consumption always depends on income. So C is the F of Y. So what all things this C represents? The, but this C has got so many meanings. Let us see what is that. It represents the willingness of households to purchase goods and services at a given level of income. Here Keynes has used willingness planning to the concept of ex ante. Now here it represents, consumption represents the willingness of the households to purchase goods and services at a given level of uh, income. How much the consumer is trying to purchase, how much the consumers are willing to purchase in the economy with the given level of income that comes under consumption function. Now what is the next point with regard to consumption function? It shows the consumption levels at different levels of income. So in the table of aggregate demand and aggregate supply you saw what are the different consumption levels at different levels of income. At 0 level 40, at 100 level of income 120, again at 200 level of income again the same 200 and again when the income increased to 300 consumption increased to 280. So in the first two situation you found C is greater than y, then you found c is equal to y, then you found c less than y. So consumption at different levels of income, how do the consumers in the economy consume at different levels of income that is represented in consumption function. Now the next one, consumption is influenced by, consumption function is influenced by preference and habits also along with the income. Consumption is also influenced by the preferences, taste and preference and as well as habits. So all these are the points that comes under consumption. So consumption is the function of income which says that when the income increases, consumption also increases. And you know how is the increasing pattern of that consumption, right? There we explained marginal propensity to consume. What is marginal propensity to consume? When the income increases, consumption also increases but less than the increase in the income. What is the reason behind that? After a particular level, a part of the income is used by, a part of increase in the income is used by the consumers to save. Now, we will explain this consumption table. Consumption function can be explained with the help of a table where in order to explain the consumption function definitely we need the component known as income. Income, consumption and what is the remark that is what we are going to see. At zero level of income again the consumption is 40. What do you represent that term C bar? What is that C bar? Autonomous consumption. What is autonomous consumption? Even at zero level of income, there is a minimum level of consumption. People need that minimum level of consumption to survive. Without that, he cannot survive. Therefore, zero level of income, 40 is the consumption level. What is the remark there? C is greater than Y. So, he might have taken this from his past saving. That is why we learned in the aggregate supply table as minus 44 saving, that is disk saving. Now, when the income rises to 100, consumption is 120 and what is the remark here? C is greater than 
Why? Because consumption is greater than income. Here, nothing is there to save. Again, disk saving. Now, throughout this, I have used the same table for your convenience. Therefore, the values, if the values differs, it will be confusing for you. So, throughout the uh, concepts, I have taken the same table for your convenience so that you can remember the values very easily. Now, when the income rises again to 200, consumption also increases. Here, income and consumption both are same. Therefore, C is equal to Y. No savings. Again, income rises to 300. Their consumption also rises to 280. Less than the increase in the income. Because 20 is saved. Therefore, we can say C is less than Y. Again, when the income rises from 300 to 400, consumption has increased from 280 to 360. Less than the increase in the income. That means... What is the difference between 360 and 400? 40. 40 is saved. So, C is less than Y. Therefore, you know if C is less than Y, savings will be there. If C is equal to Y, no saving. If C is greater than Y, this saving. So, these are the remarks that you can find. Now, based on this, we can draw a diagram where the level of income can be marked on the x-axis, y-axis, x-axis, sorry, x-axis. And consumption can be marked on the y-axis. You know, in a consumption function, if we have to represent that in the form of a diagram, two curves will be drawn. One is a consumption curve and the other one is income because consumption always depends on income. We have the equation C is the F of Y. Therefore, to show the consumption function, two curves will be drawn. That is one is consumption curve and the other one is Y curve. Y curve means what? Income. Now, from where do the income curve originates? We have already drawn it in aggregate supply. Income curve always originates from zero. That is why I have drawn Y always originates from the zero axis. It originates, it, it starts from the point of origin. This is the Y curve. Now, from where do the C curve starts? The C curve definitely starts from the Y axis. Why? Because even at the zero level of income, there is a minimum level of consumption. Therefore, it starts only from here. Point C is a starting point of the consumption curve. Therefore, this particular area can be termed as C bar. The same thing we have marked in aggregate demand also, reminding me about that. So, the distance from O to C can be marked as C bar, that is autonomous consumption. Even at zero level of income, there is a minimum level of consumption. So, C curve can be drawn from the y axis. When you draw the C curve, you can find this is how we draw the C curve. When you draw the C curve, you can find an intersection point between y and C. Now, let us explain this with the help of the table. Now, the point of intersection between C and Y, income and saving. It is a point where income and saving are equal. Now, this is a point where the income and the saving are equal, where we get income as 200 and the consumption, sorry, consumption as 200. I told as saving, it is not saving, consumption. Okay, so the point E is the point where 200 is equal to 200. That means whatever is in whatever the income increase is experienced, the same is used for consumption. 200 is equal to 200. Therefore, at this point we can say C is equal to Y, and that point is known as break-even point. So the point, the, the point where the two curves intersect. There, Y will be equal to C. What does it mean? Whatever increase in the income is used for consumption. Whatever increase in the income from 100 to 200 is used for the consumption as 200. See, 200 and 200. Therefore, C is equal to Y. That C is equal to Y is represented here in the diagram. Point E is the break-even point. 
Now look at the left hand side of the equilibrium point and the right hand side of the equilibrium point. To the left of the equilibrium point, if it is the left side, this is the left side. Okay. To the left of the equilibrium point, what can you find? There is this savings. Right? See, to the left of the equilibrium point, you can learn it from the diagram itself. Which curve is lying above? Our C curve is lying above. That means to the left of equilibrium point, C is greater than Y. See, to the right of equilibrium point, which curve is lying above? y curve is lying above c curve right therefore y is greater than c here so here c is greater than y this area c is greater than y and in this area y is greater than c so let us see that in the table before the equilibrium point what happens c is greater than y there are two situations where c is greater than y where c is 40 and consumption is 120 income is 0 and 100 this is that particular point. Dis saving. So, what is a dis saving? What are the values of dis saving here? The values of dis saving are minus 40. One is minus 40. Isn't it? One is minus 20. So, this is how we learn. So, here is the dis saving part to the left of the equilibrium point. Why? Because C is greater than Y. To the right of the equilibrium point, you can find Y curve is lying above the C curve. Therefore, y is greater than c that means there is savings look at the table here after c is equal to y you can find c is less than y that means y is greater than c if y is greater than c i told you there is savings in the economy therefore this part shows the savings so in the consumption function diagram we can mark both savings dis saving and the break even point the break-even point is a point where y is equal to c. Dis-saving is a part where c is greater than y. Saving is a part where c is less than y. Now, observations of the consumption curve. After drawing the curve based on the table, there are so many observations regarding the consumption curve. Let us point it out one by one. Number one. Consumption curve starts from y-axis due to the autonomous consumption. That is very clear from the diagram. Consumption curve starts from this point C from the y-axis. Why? Because even at the zero level of income, there is a minimum level of consumption. Once again, I repeat, at zero level of income, the consumption was 40. Once again, in the table, at zero level of income, consumption level is 40. Now, the second observation is consumption curve slopes upwards showing positive relationship between income and consumption. Definitely, if there is a positive relationship between two variables, consumption curve will slope upwards. Which are the two variables here? Consumption and the income. When the income increases, consumption also increases. Therefore, the slope of the consumption curve should be upwards that is why it is written here consumption curve slopes upwards showing the positive relationship between income and consumption now the next one point e shows the break even point where c is equal to y we have learned that point e shows the break even point where income is equal to consumption 200 is equal to 200 right so Observations, consumption curve starts from the y-axis due to autonomous consumption. Consumption curve slopes upwards showing the positive relationship between income and consumption. Point E shows the break-even point where C is equal to Y. Now, next observation. To the left of break-even point, there is this saving because C is greater than Y. Just as I told you now. To the left of equilibrium point E, C is greater than Y. Therefore, there is this saving represented by the area C O E. This is C O E, this particular area. That is what is written here. C O E. Again, I will show you it in the diagram. C O and E. This particular area. 
now what is the next observation to the right of break even point there is savings because c is less than y or y is greater than c that is what you have to go through next to the right of this disequilibrium point this side the saving is there because y is greater than c or c is less than y here okay so these are the observations of the consumption curve once again consumption curve slopes upwards it starts from the y axis to the left of the equilibrium uh, break even point there is this saving to the right of the break even point there is savings now we will make the uh, final statement of the keynesian psychological law of consumption all together i have written it in a table let us see what is the keynesian psychological law of consumption point number 1 there is a minimum consumption known as autonomous consumption because survival needs consumption that means even at zero level of income there is a minimum level of consumption for the people to survive so he stresses on autonomous consumption now as income increases consumption also increases as income increases consumption also increases c is the f of y so what can we write here this is autonomous consumption he stresses on autonomous consumption therefore this letter c bar next here there is a minimum consumption known as autonomous consumption that is what i have written here then as income increases consumption also increases c is the f of y the next one income increases at a greater proportion than consumption after a particular level income increases at a greater proportion than consumption after a particular level what happens after a particular level increase in the income will be at a greater proportion increase in the consumption will be at a lesser proportion why because people will save a part of it that is what we say when the income increases consumption increases but less than the increase in the income consumption will be increasing only at a lesser rate than income that means after a particular level income increase will be higher than consumption increase this is due to the presence of marginal propensity to consume which can be denoted by the letter b so remember the following terms c bar c is the f of y and uh, mpc marginal propensity to consume which is denoted by the letter y so so far you have learned the equations such as ad is equal to c plus i as is equal to c plus s as is equal to y y is equal to c plus s autonomous consumption as a c bar then marginal propensity to consume as b and uh, consumption function as c is the f of y i hope the topics are clear to you thank you